15 strange British royal habits that will make you say, what? The royal family meticulously follows all kinds of odd protocols and customs, no matter how bizarre they may seem. As the rulers of Britain and symbols of the nation, they must uphold certain standards at all times. However, some of their habits appear downright ridiculous. From bans on certain foods, games, and ways of traveling, to extremely specific rules about proposing marriage and vowing, the royal family's eccentric traditions are ingrained into their daily lives. Some originated centuries ago, while others are more recent quirks. Here are the top 15 strangest British royal family habits and customs that are downright strange. Make sure to let me know which ones shock you the most in the comments. Number 1. The monarch celebrates two birthdays. While most people have only one birthday per year, the reigning British monarch celebrates two, their actual date of birth and an official birthday. For instance, King Charles' real birthday is on November 14th, but he also marks an official birthday celebration in June. This second celebration is marked by the Trooping the Color Parade, an impressive military pageant where regiments display their flags or colors as they march past the monarch on the Horse Guards Parade in London. The tradition of the monarch having two birthdays originated with King George II back in 1748. George was born in November, which he felt was too cold for an annual birthday parade. So he combined his November 4th birthday celebration with the annual mid-June military parade known as Trooping the Color to create an official summer birthday tradition. This double birthday custom has continued to the present day for subsequent rulers, including Queen Elizabeth II and King George II, Queen Victoria, and King Edward VII. Number 2. Guests are weighed before and after Christmas dinner. A long-standing royal family tradition that dates back to the reign of King Edward VII involves weighing Christmas dinner guests before and after the extravagant feast. This unusual practice begins with each guest stepping onto a portable weighing scale upon entering Sandringham House before the meal. Their weight is then recorded in a book by a member of the royal staff. After the multiple-course Christmas dinner concludes, the stuffed guests are weighed once again on the same scale with the weight differences documented in the records. This ritual allows the royal family to proudly highlight just how well their guests were fed and how much they enjoyed the ample Christmas spread. In addition to Edward VII starting the quirky weighing custom at the turn of the century, King George V enjoyed analyzing the weigh-ins and reviewing just how much food was consumed according to the weights. Over a century later, the weighing tradition continues today with the royal family enjoying the analysis of who gained the most weight from the Christmas feasting. Number 3. Two heirs can't travel together This royal protocol is intended to protect the line of succession. In case there's an accident or tragedy, it prevents the next two heirs to the throne from traveling on the same plane or vehicle. This became an official mandate in the 1950s after a tragic plane crash killed multiple heirs to another European throne. The British royals took note and established this procedure to safeguard future kings. That's why you'll never see King Charles and Prince William on the same flight. They always take separate planes and vehicles, even when going to the same event. While this may seem paranoid, the royal family spares no precaution to preserve the lineage. It must make coordinating family trips and outings extremely convoluted. But the royal hierarchy deems it non-negotiable for security purposes. The heirs and spares must stay separated. Prince George and Princess Charlotte will always be subjected to this rule when older. You can't be too careful when it comes to protecting centuries of heritage, though this weird rule makes coordinating the royals' busy schedules a logistical nightmare. Number 4. Royals must pack morning clothes when traveling When members of the royal family travel abroad, they always make sure to pack morning attire in their luggage, even for the happiest occasions. This grim custom serves an important purpose – to prepare the royals to publicly mourn in the event of a death in the family while overseas. The black mourning ensembles and dark accessories provide appropriate formal attire to wear when making sudden somber announcements, attending memorial services, and greeting grieving crowds. Royals never want to be caught without the proper mourning dress in times of tragedy. For Queen Elizabeth II, this meant traveling with black dresses, coats, hats, 
and veils for over seven decades of globetrotting tours, just in case a death in the family, like her father King George VI, were to occur while abroad. Even for happy trips like Princess Diana's 1997 visit to New York City, she made sure to pack a black morning outfit in case of an emergency. This strange royal habit illustrates their sense of perpetual readiness and duty to the nation even when away. Number 5. The late queen insisted on having a piper play bagpipes outside her window every morning to wake her up. This tradition started with Queen Victoria in the 1800s and has continued with every monarch since. The piper arrives at 9 a.m. sharp, dressed in full Scottish regalia, including a kilt. He then plays the bagpipes for 15 minutes right underneath the late queen's bedroom window, no matter the weather or location. Even when the late queen was away, such as Balmoral Castle, she would have a local bagpiper come to perform the daily duty. The tune played varies from day to day, but is intended to gently wake the queen before her busy schedule. She specifically requests the bagpipes for their loud, piercing sound. Other members of the royal family have been startled awake by this decades-old tradition, and it's become a regular part of life at Buckingham Palace. The late queen considers it the ideal Scottish alarm clock. Number 6. King Charles reportedly takes his own toilet seat with him when he travels. King Charles insists on having his custom toilet seat shipped ahead at any hotel or location he'll be staying at. The extra cushy seat reportedly was made to fit his precise specifications for comfort. While it may seem odd to travel with a personal lavatory seat, King Charles apparently finds public seats uncomfortable. The seat in question is an oval mahogany one that was custom made by a company that usually just manufactures fine furniture. It's nearly 20 inches wide and is thicker and plusher than a regular toilet seat. The seat gets shipped in a custom wooden case ahead of King Charles' arrival to his destination. The bizarre habit springs from his picky preferences and desire for home comfort while traveling. Now, as King Charles, it remains to be seen if he maintains this quirky custom. Number 7. The Queen Has Someone Wear Her New Shoes Before She Wears Them To Break Them In the late Queen Elizabeth had a staffer wear brand new shoes for at least half a day before she would wear them herself to break them in first. The ritual dates back to centuries as a luxury afforded to royals so they would not have to suffer discomfort from stiff, rigid new shoes. Usually a low-ranked housemaid with feet a similar size to the Queen's would don the new pair of shoes and walk around the palace in them all day. The shoes would get scuffed and softened up before being polished and presented to the Queen to wear. Shoemakers today actually craft the queen's shoes with extra stiff leather and durable soles, knowing they'll be worn in advance. The bizarre ritual spans many years in monarchs, though some modern royals have abandoned it. The late Queen Elizabeth supposedly found it an indispensable part of maintaining comfort in her royal footwear. Number 8. The royal family is not allowed to play Monopoly as it gets too vicious. The British royals have reportedly been banned from playing the popular board game Monopoly by Queen Elizabeth herself due to it sparking too many arguments. Prince Andrew once revealed that the family's prohibited from playing Monopoly at home because it gets too vicious. The exact origin of the rule is unknown, but it seems that games of Monopoly cause too many competitive feuds. Over the years, various members of the royal family have mentioned the rule. The Queen's grandchildren, for example, have noted their frustration at not being able to play the classic game, especially over holidays. However, the Queen held firm on her monopoly on Monopoly. The game's known for tearing families apart, so perhaps the peacekeeping Queen wanted to keep Family Game Night's Royal Rumble free. Number 9. The Royal Family's Not Allowed to Sign Autographs for Fear of Forgery a standard policy for Britain's royals is declining to provide autographs under any circumstances to prevent forgery. Concerns over imitation of royal signatures convinced Buckingham Palace to ban the practice. Any autographs could allow forgers to perfectly replicate their handwriting and create convincing counterfeit letters or documents. Due to their prominence, royal autographs also had the potential to be prized collector's items. To nip both issues in the bud, the Queen prohibited herself and her family from signing any autographs or books. On the rare instance an autograph is permitted, such as for a head of state, the autograph is immediately destroyed afterwards. While that may disappoint eager fans seeking a prize signature, 
the identity theft risks were deemed too great for the royals to continue openly signing memorabilia or greeting cards. Number 10. King Charles has his valet squeeze exactly one inch of toothpaste onto his toothbrush every morning. King Charles is very particular about his oral hygiene routine and insists that his toothbrush be prepared in the same meticulous way every morning. As soon as Charles wakes up, his valet brings him a glass of warm water with lemon to drink before anything else. The valet then lays out Charles' toothbrush, toothpaste, and anything else he needs for his morning routine. When preparing the toothbrush, the valet squeezes out precisely one inch of toothpaste onto the bristles. No more, no less. Charles carries a special cloth ruler with him for the valet to measure the one inch of toothpaste against. The type of toothpaste must also always be the same brand. Every morning, the valet follows these rules diligently to prepare the toothpaste for Charles to brush his teeth to his liking. This stringent oral hygiene habit gives insight into how meticulous and particular Charles is about all aspects of his daily life being in perfect order according to his specifications. Number 11. King Charles insists on having iron shoelaces on his shoes. King Charles has very high standards when it comes to his attire and appearance. He pays attention to small details that most people would overlook, like making sure his shoelaces are perfectly pressed and ironed before he wears his shoes. Every morning, along with preparing King Charles' outfit, his valet takes the time to carefully iron the laces for King Charles' dress shoes that day. The valet will iron them before lacing up the shoes, so that the laces are smooth with no wrinkles or creases when King Charles puts them on. Some say King Charles even sent the laces to be professionally laundered and pressed periodically. The polished look of stiff ironed laces is important to King Charles to complete the tidy formal aesthetic he favors for his shoes. It also shows how he expects excellence in trivial matters that others would consider insignificant. This habit demonstrates King Charles' eye for detail and desire for perfection and order in his daily routines. Number 12. King Charles Requires 7 Boiled Eggs King Charles demands that his valets boil 7 eggs for him every morning so he can select the one with the perfect consistency to eat. The future king is said to be extremely particular about how his eggs are prepared. To accommodate this quirk, the royal kitchen begins boiling eggs for King Charles precisely five minutes before he wakes. Two eggs are medium boiled, another two are hard boiled, and the last three are boiled for four minutes. Once ready, the eggs are presented in an egg cup array for King Charles to scrutinize and choose. According to the palace chef, King Charles nearly always selects one of the medium boiled eggs, deeming the white nicely solidified, but the yolk still runny. However, he insists on having options available in case he wakes up wanting a firmer yolk that day. If none of the pre-boiled eggs are deemed acceptable, King Charles has been known to send the whole tray back and demand an entirely new batch. It's an exacting morning routine, but the patient palace staff oblige King Charles' egg pickiness and begin boiling a fresh selection anytime the king is unsatisfied. Number 13. The royal family must learn royal etiquette, including how to sit, walk, and fold clothes properly. Members of the royal family have strict training in proper royal etiquette starting from a young age. This includes learning how to sit, stand, and walk in the correct manner befitting royalty. Etiquette lessons cover how to properly fold one's garments, climb in and out of vehicles, wave to the public, and even stand with good posture. Department rules also dictate how to politely sit, which is knees and ankles together, feet angled to one side. Younger royals are taught how to gracefully lower themselves into deep curtsies and bows. Intricate details govern every motion and stance. One example is the Windsor walk, taking strides with the chin up and arms swung straight past the hips. Such mannerisms get ingrained from years of preparation to conduct themselves flawlessly in public at all times. Number 14. The king never travels without a pack of his blood in case of an emergency. This tradition dates back to when the monarch did extensive travel by carriage before modern transportation. Should the royal carriage overturn or get into an accident, the king could potentially need an immediate blood transfusion. As the king's blood type is rare, it was imperative to have a supply on hand for emergencies. 
Nowadays, the royal physician still carries a refrigerated pack of the king's blood type whenever the monarch travels overseas or embarks on long journeys within the UK. The blood is provided by the king himself during regular donations to replenish the supply, which is kept current. The blood is transported in secret and securely by an accompanying royal aide. Though blood transfusions are easier to obtain today than in the past, the tradition continues both for practicality and historical continuity. Number 15. The royal family must always pack in black. In addition to packing a black morning outfit when traveling abroad, Members of the royal family must also bring black undergarments, sleepwear, and socks. This tradition stems from Queen Victoria's era when royals always traveled in black attire in case a family member passed away while they were away. Even in modern times, the royal family adheres to packing at least one set of black garments and underthings in their luggage. While morbid, this habit provides royals the ability to properly mourn in the event of an unexpected death. For King Charles, mourning black suits, shirts, and ties are packed whenever he travels. Prince William also brings black suits, shirts, and ties whenever they go abroad. Female family members like Princess Catherine, Meghan Markle, and Princess Anne also pack dark dresses, stockings, and shoes. Having the appropriate black mourning attire enables the royals to honor centuries of tradition should a tragedy occur while traveling or living overseas. Well, those are some truly odd habits of the British royal family. What do you think of their quirky traditions? Do you have any other strange royal facts to share? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to keep up with more royal content. Tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. What's the strangest habit you have in your family? I'd love to hear all about the unique traditions you follow. Let me know in the comments.